Hey there, today we're going to go into Adobe Premiere Pro for the complete beginner. So this is the person that's never used it before in their lives. The most you've done is installed it. Um, so let's say you've you made a couple videos on your phone or camera. You want to edit those together to just something real simple and easy that you can show to people, put on YouTube or Facebook or wherever. This is for you. If you have used Premiere Pro pretty much at all, you'll want to skip this video. Okay, launching it. You've installed it. Just go, I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm just going to go down to my programs and I'm going to start typing Premiere Pro. And let's let it launch. The first thing you're going to see is this screen. You won't have anything under your recent because you've never used it before. I'm going to have a few things here because I have. All you care about is this one right here, new project. So just click on that. First thing you want to do is decide on the name. I'm going to call this demo one and decide on where you want this to be saved. Uh, so you can save it wherever you want. It doesn't matter. I'm going to click on this or you can go browse. I've got a folder already with some videos I did of the London tube. So that's where I want mine to save. So I'm just going to select that folder and it's going to save that into those London tube files. Leave everything else as is. Like I said, this is the intro video. Don't touch anything. Hit OK. All right, your default layout should look something like this. You can change it if you go up to Windows, Workspaces, and you can change it to like the CS5 layout or you can customize it. I'd say just leave it at the default. Ignore all of these for the purpose of ours. What we care about first off is this one here. This is our project window and the name of our project. I want to get my video files into here. There's four ways you can do this. You can double click on it and then pull up that folder where you've got your videos at. You can go to file, import, go to that folder where you've got your files at. You can hit control I on your keyboard, go to the folder where the files are at, or you can just go to the folder on your desktop, select them all, drag and drop them. Okay, now that I've got my files in, the next thing I care about is this timeline here. So in order to create your first video, just drag and drop whatever video you want to use onto the timeline. It's going to default the format to whatever the format was that it was originally used. So since I did this with my camera, since I did this with my phone, notice it's in that vertical format that the phone recorded it in. It's not what you would expect to see for uh, something on you know YouTube or whatever. I'm going to show you how to create a new one in just a second, but first I want to show you if you are happy with it and you want to change the name, notice what it does is it just names it the default, but I don't want my sequence to be named the same as my first video file. I want to name it something new and just double click on it and rechange the name. Okay, now let's say I want to do a new sequence that uses a more standard video format. You can go down here, new item, sequence, or you can go up and file new sequence. Or use the keyboard shortcut, control N. Um, you're going to get a lot of options here. This is the presets. I would say don't really mess with any of this. Just go with um, something standard. In my case, I'm just going to use a DSLR 1080p and I'm going to choose 30 frames per second. Notice down here my frame rate for my videos is at that. So that's kind of why I want that to happen. And you can name it. So we'll call this demo two and hit OK. Now I'm going to drag and drop this onto my sequence and you'll get a pop-up here and this is basically telling me my clip doesn't match my sequence settings which I already know it doesn't you can change your sequence settings to match or you can keep it as you decide it so if I go change my sequence settings here's what happens notice it changes it back to that vertical format which I don't want it to do so instead I'm going to do another new one And this time when I drag and drop, I'm going to say keep existing. I'm telling it don't change it to match that format. 
So we've got black boxes now. Now there's different things you can do if this is what you want. That's great. I'm going to click on it and notice what happened here. I've got this effects control that popped up. And this is where you can kind of change a lot of stuff. So if you want to move it, I'm going to mouse over the position and you see I've got little arrows left and right. Click with my mouse and I can just drag and drop it left and right and move the video around within there. Same thing with up and down. You can click into it and type if you want. And I'm just or in my case, what I want is I want to scale it up. I want this thing to actually fit that frame and I want to make it more obvious. There we go. Next thing I'm going to show you is only one other thing and that's going to be the volume. This is if you feel the volume's too loud or too low. I'm going to play it for a second. I'm going to show you. So as you can see, it's peaking right around negative six in the kind of yellow to orange which is about where you want it. Um, if you get into the red, that means it's going to be too loud. If you're too far into the green, it's probably too quiet. So let's leave that as it is. But if you wanted to change the volume levels, this is where you would do that. Just drag it left and right, or you can even click into the little DB and type in if you want. It does create a keyframe, so that's something to keep in mind. If you want to learn how to use keyframes, I've got a separate video on that, so I won't show you now. Okay, now let's say I want to do some edits on this, but it's kind of hard because I'm pretty far away. There's a lot of blank space here. You can zoom in on this by clicking down here, and that'll bring you in. Gives you more to work with. Or on your keyboard, when you're clicked within the timeline, so no notice it's selected, hit the plus button on your keyboard and zoom in. And if you hit the negative cut button, it zooms back out. So I'm going to zoom in so I'm nice and close so I can kind of see where I'm working with. Okay, so I want this video to start where the train comes rolling up right there. Now, I can cut it so you can hit the key. You can hit the C on your keyboard. Or over here on the left here, you get the razor tool. And just click on that, and you're going to have your little razor icon now. And I'm just going to click where I want that cut to happen. And you can see it broken into two halves. The selected one is going to be the highlighted one. The not selected one is not. Switch back to the selection tool or hit the V on your keyboard. And if I want to delete this, just hit the delete on my keyboard and it's gone. Or you can right click on it and uh, you can cut it. Now notice what I've got here though is I've got a lot of space. So if I were to actually export this video, this is how it would be exported. It would be a playing, playing, playing with just a lot of blank screen. Okay, you can click on it and just drag it over to the left until it stops. That Now you know it's at the beginning. Or you can do this in front of it, right click when it's highlighted like that, right click, go ripple delete, it automatically moves it to the beginning of wherever it needs to be. So you can see how long the video is. I'm just going to move my playhead there and I've got a 6 second, 6.20 second video. Now I want to add another clip so I just click on it. Let's say I'm going to add this one. Drag and drop it. Now what you can do is you can right click ripple delete again to get those nice and close or if you select it and you kind of drag it you notice what will happen is it'll actually just kind of pop right there so it actually knows to um, attach it so it's a nice kind of a nice little feature in there. Uh, I'm going to change my view of that as well. Let's just zoom it in. And now I've got two videos put together in a way that now I want to maybe export those to something. And my video is eight seconds long. Last thing I want to show, show you here is effects. So click on effects. So this is not effects control. This is actually where you add your effects. So let's say you want to do some kind of transitions. Maybe you want to do a cross dissolve from the first shot to the next one. The reason why I'm getting that error message is because there's not enough here. Um, this clip is too short, so I'm going to delete it. So I'm just going to click on delete and let's grab this one. Yep, that's nice and long. Put that there. Go back to effects. Do my cross dissolve. 
let's see what happens. Notice I get now a nice little cross dissolve. Let's zoom in on that. Okay. And now let's say uh, my your video, another thing that you can do instead of doing a um, cut, if you want to shorten a video, is just move your mouse cursor towards the, wherever you want to shorten it at. And notice I get this little arrow. Click, and what you can do is just drag it, and it's going to shorten it that way. All right, last thing I'm going to do here is export it. So I've got it the way I want it. I'm going to go to Demo 3. That's the one I want to export. You can right-click, go Export Media, or you can go File, Export Media. On this screen, it's going to give you a few options here depending on where this is going. Um, generally, I'd say leave it as a default. If you want to know, H.264 is kind of an industry standard. Uh, which means it'll work on most every player. Uh, MPEG-4, also very standard as well. So I'm going to go, uh, AVI is not very standard, so I actually don't want that. I'm going to go H.264. And I'm going to do a preset of match high bitrate. So that's basically telling me, you know, give me the highest quality video you can. Um, if you're going to YouTube or Facebook, this is perfect. Let's say you're going to Instagram. You will need to change these settings as well because Instagram is very particular about the formats. So look up a video on that. Uh, I haven't done one yet. I keep meaning to, but I haven't. So um, do a quick YouTube search and check the export settings for Instagram. And that will tell you what to set your... Um, because uh, you're going to need to change most likely your frame rate, if I remember correctly, off the top of my head. And I think the audio settings need to be changed as well. Um, if I remember right, the sample rate needs to be different, but I, I could be wrong on that. Look up the video. For the purpose of us and what we're doing right now, all you need to do is leave everything at the defaults. Last thing, output name. Click that. And this is going to give you an option of where you want to export it to. I'm going to send mine to my desktop and now hit the export button depending on the length of your video this might take a while so if you've got a really uh, long video hit export and go make yourself a cup of coffee my video is nice and short so this will be real quick okay and i'm going to jump to my desktop real quick we've got demo three and my super exciting video of the London Underground. Um, and that's basics, that's very, very basic. Importing, editing, and exporting a video. This, like I said, is for the complete newbie. I've got plenty of other videos on this channel on doing more advanced edits, and I'm constantly adding other videos. So, hope you found this useful. If you did, be sure to leave me a comment, a like, share the video, all that other crap.